I would like to welcome Sarah Cooper. Um, she was, um, Sarah Cooper was, Cooper, sorry, was adopted at the age of 11 to two amazing parents who have stuck with her through many challenges. Sarah will be turning 18 in June, around the same time she will graduate from the North Shore Recovery High School. Sarah describes herself as self-reflective, having eclectic hobbies and interests. She has been boxing for about five years and would like to compete in the Olympics one day. Sarah enjoys yoga and a wide variety of music, which has helped her express her feelings in many ways. Sarah's long-term goal is to start a residential facility for teenagers who suffer, suffer from, with PTSD and substance abuse. She hopes to be able to partner with her mother on this journey. Please welcome Sarah. In programs in foster care, I've encountered my fair share of supposed caregivers who in, the, who in the end neglected and abused me. I clearly remember what it's like to wake up every morning and hate myself. I often wished I was dead because that would be, that would have been better than having to live in my own personal hell due to the pain and trauma that I've endured. Today, I can look at myself in the mirror and no longer believe that everything that happened to me was my fault. I am 17 years old, I will be turning 18 in June. In all honesty, I never thought I'd live to see my 18th birthday. I've suffered from PTSD and reactive attachment disorder for most of my life. I remember having to see psychologists when I was younger. I endured many ER visits and hospitalizations for years after my first therapy and psychology appointments. I was diagnosed with polysubstance abuse disorder, which is something that I've struggled with for numerous years. There have been many times in my life when I've tried to commit suicide, and I've overdosed many times. Every mental health professional I ever saw could tell that I needed to learn to cope with my emotional issues. But the sessions were ineffective until I decided that I wanted to change my life. Finally, I've been able to take these negative experiences and I turn them into something positive. I want to advocate for teenagers who are like me and struggle with mental health and addiction issues. Here's part of the story of how that change happened. When I was 15, I found an organization called My Life, My Choice, which helps teens who are at risk who have been sexually exploited. I've been, I've been mentored by Audrey Morrissey for My Life, My Choice for almost three years. She has taught me that I need not be ashamed of what I've been put through or what I've done. Audrey accepts me for who I am. She has helped me become more comfortable with myself. However, my substance abuse caused me to pick up charges, which is what led me to DYS and DMH. I had never heard of DMH before I started working with this agency a little over a year ago. To me, it was just another system that was trying to control my life. As much as I resented both DYS and DMH, I learned down the road that these organizations saved my life. What shocked me was that they didn't turn their backs on me, partly because my mother was so insistent, <laughs> but also because I have caseworkers who genuinely care. During my initial stay in DYS custody at the Regional Review Team meeting, one of the DYS people said, there is no program in DYS suitable for this girl. We shouldn't criminalize trauma. DYS arranged for a psychologist to come in and evaluate me. It was determined by DYS and DMH that the best thing for me at the time would be going to an IRTP. That's an intensive residential treatment program. The IRTP in which I was placed at is called Community Academy and is run by DMH. Woo! <laughs> The DMH run program, as much as I hated what I perceived as a loss of control over my own life, made it possible for me to gain physical and emotional stability for the very first time. I was finally at a point where I wanted to change my life, and during my previous placements, I resisted change with every fiber of my being. A lot of therapeutic setting is completely useless if a client's not ready to help themselves. But for me, being removed from people, places, and things and harming the past helped me discover who I am. 
While in Kohanic, I was able to take part in group and individual therapy. Once I got comfortable in the program, I was able to open up more and be myself. I emphasized to people that I had lots of reservations about confidentiality issues. And as a team, especially Larry Newman, <laughs> we all worked together to come up with a plan that would make everyone feel safe and comfortable. As time got closer for me to transition on to the next phase of my life, I was able to do more things outside of the program, like go for extended overnights and room passes at my mom's house. A few months before I left, I started working with an outside trauma specialist, and I found that it's helped me a lot. To this day, I am committed on working on my healing process. I go to a sober high school called North Shore Recovery High. I associate with sober friends and healthy friends. I stay in touch with my mentors, and I keep going to therapy as much as I hate it. <laughs> as of today, I'm three months away from graduating high school on time. I'm in the process of moving back in with my mom. I'm working towards getting my own apartment and starting college full time. I continue to uh, excuse me. I continue to develop my relationships with both my parents, whom I love very much. Going forward, I want to grow strong roots and foster my independent living skills outside of a program. I am surrounded by a supportive group of people, some of whom are here today. I am proud to claim my place in this world. I hope to help struggling adolescents like myself in the future. And I hope my story is useful to you so you can see how important it is to establish a collaboration between DMH and DYS. We need to heal rather than criminalize tra traumatic experiences for other young people in this state. Thank you.